One of the things that sent me down this path was a project I did a few years ago for a Novartis, uh, promoting their statin drug Lotrell with a well-known sports personality. Two things hit me at the time. One, I think it's fundamentally wrong to promote prescription drugs to the general public. I don't think they're a qualified audience. And two, if we were to justify such a massive marketing spend, I'm assuming people that don't need the drug would have to eventually take it. If you Google cholesterol, you get the same information over and over again. It's bad. It's all about HDL versus LDL. It's incomplete information. Here is first Chris Masterjohn and then Jerry Brunetti telling you what you actually need to know about cholesterol. How long have we scientifically known that the lipid hypothesis is bullshit? Well, it's kind of a difficult question because there are elements of the lipid hypothesis that have a basis in reality, and there are elements of the lipid hypothesis that basically don't. The lipid hypothesis, by the time it really caught on, got tied up together with the diet-heart hypothesis, which is just a fat and cholesterol in your diet that's contributing to heart disease. You have to tease out the lipid hypothesis from the diet-heart hypothesis. The diet-heart hypothesis never really had any sa sound scientific foundation to begin with. The idea that cholesterol causes heart disease is really a total uh, load of junk, but the idea that lipids in the blood have something to do with heart disease, which is, you know, a com which is one very loose way of interpreting the lipid hypothesis, has gathered a lot of evidence. But it's focused the blame, at least in, uh, in a critical review of the scientific literature, it has focused the blame not on cholesterol and certainly not on eating cholesterol, but on eating too many polyunsaturated fatty acids from vegetable oils, not having a high enough antioxidant intake, and not having a high enough metabolism and all the nutrients that are needed uh, for metabolism to utilize the lipids in the blood efficiently. The food is medicine thing is, is, is a fascinating talk because you, when you're talking to people, they're right in on you because, you know, I, first of all, you know, my, my opening comments oftentimes are related to, you know, how many people are taking the, the purple pill or Rolaids or Tums? You know, I know you're taking it. I mean, they're not spending that kind of money on TV if they don't have a lot of clientele that have stomach distress or intestinal distress. There's a lot of you on that. And then you're all on cholesterol medication because everybody, you know, is now t told that cholesterol has been vilified. You know, and I don't want to steal the thunder of the people who really talk to cholesterol talk, but the reality is cholesterol is your friend. And the other question is, if you're going to do a test on uh, the blood lipid panels, you need to get some exhaustive panels done. Not just total cholesterol, not just LDL and HDL. You got to go through, you know, all these other subsets of the HDL and the LDL to find out exactly what the subsets are, because the subsets will tell you whether or not, you know, your cholesterols are really an inflammatory response, or whether or not it's just fine. Because you can, there's now inflammatory markers they can look for, you know, like C-reactive protein. If you have high CRP, you're on fire, and your cholesterol level might be low. And guess what? You're at high risk. For an incident, if your homocysteine levels are high, you're at risk. You're at risk for something, regardless of what your cholesterol levels are. Conversely, if your cholesterol levels are elevated and your inflammatory markers are low, normal low, you know, you're in good shape, particularly if you're looking at the other things as well. And that's what you need to look at. You, you look at all the numbers together. You don't look at just, oh, you know, you got to total cholesterol of 230. Oh my gosh, you know, we got to get you on Lipitor. I mean, that's completely idiotic. The cholesterol is an anti-inflammatory agent. Cholesterol is an antioxidant. You can't make vitamin D in your skin without cholesterol. You can't develop, you know, a good healthy brain that thinks well and has good emotional moods without cholesterol. So, I mean, if the body makes all this cholesterol and it does all these wonderful things, why are we singling it out, you know, as some kind of villain? You know, it's like, you know, it's like going to a house where, uh, you know, the house just burned down and you see a fire truck there. And every time you go to a burned down house site and there's a fire truck there putting out the remaining embers, you know, you make this connection, you know, fire, fire truck. Therefore, fire trucks cause fires. Don't shoot the messenger. It's the messenger. And so the cholesterol foods are not the problem. 
it's the inflammation that invites cholesterol production in vivo you know to put out the fire that's the problem and uh and i still can't believe that we haven't gotten there yet except in in the alternative medical arena and in, in the, in the nutritional arena it's just that's the only place people are hearing this it's astounding to me how many people much younger than me in their 40s are on cholesterol medication because their cholesterol is like a little over 200 and now there's this additional myth that maybe kids need to be on statin drugs seriously and there's this other myth that um, you almost can't get it too low which is complete suicide and they've done studies showing that when the cholesterol levels drop below a certain threshold suicide levels go up and that's not surprising considering the fact that cholesterol is a precursor of serotonin you know the feel-good chemical you know so you know when they're when they're playing with a naturally occurring body secretion like cholesterol and assuming that it can only be bad when they know so much about that's good about cholesterol that's a very very disturbing um, indictment of the so-called medical system in the United States. I mean, that's that's Neanderthal. I mean, in fact, that's, a, that's to say it's Neanderthal is an insult to Neanderthals because they weren't even that stupid. I mean, this is this is insane. This is what this is, and it's it's also egregiously self you know self-serving in terms of a, a mercantile agenda, on on selling stuff that people think well maybe you know maybe they're thinking well at worst it won't hurt them like taking a baby aspirin a day. I don't want to take a baby aspirin every day. You know. I can eat I can get baby aspirin in peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, beans and on and on and on and on. I can get all that stuff from there. So food is medicine. It's not just, you know, a feel good kind of idea that food is medicine. It's downright medicine. It's downright medicinal. And uh, and I've seen it. I've seen it with so many people being able to come out of out of the tomb, you know, or a living tomb. Uh, because they got away from the idea that they have a deficiency of drugs, therefore that's why they're sick, as opposed to they don't eat this and they do eat that, and you incorporate lifestyle changes, etc. And it's it's a, it's profound. It's it's much more profound than coming out of the hospital. But we're whiz bang boomed impressed with modern medicine because we're whiz bang boom impressed with high technology and we're and we're we're the masters of high technology we're the you know we're the gizmo guys we're good at it we're clever as hell the pet scan the cat scan the mris tremendous you know but that has nothing to do with degenerative illness that's rescue therapy you know that's trauma medicine and we're good at that maybe that's what we should stay at you know if, we, if the medical system would just wake up someday and that means the people have to wake up and realize you guys are good at that you know, this is what we want you to do. But let's leave the rehabilitation of society and the prevention of degenerative diseases in the hands of, really, the real pharmacists, which are the people who know how to cook. And that means, you know, mothers and fathers and grandparents and farmers, you know, in tandem with nutritionists, in tandem with agronomists, in tandem with... Uh, doctors who care about that that part of it or piece of it you know that's where you're gonna have a a home run in the medical system 